Hello and welcome to This Week in Cows and what a cows week it's been. A few words can sum it up, like tides, like currents, like wind or lack of it. And many other words, actually, Matt. Well, yeah, one of the ones that springs to mind for me is super tankers. That was a factor uh, this Cows Week. But I think, you know, that's one of the things that makes this event quite special. And I mean, all the competitors may hate it at the time, but it's what brings them back because it's so different to any other event. You've got all these potential hurdles and obstacles and considerations to take into, into account. It's a special event. It certainly is. Well, let's go back to Saturday, and uh, one of the hotly anticipated events was the Cape 31s over my shoulder here, and uh, well, that turned out to be pretty spectacular. I could only see three boats that were behind the line <laughs> at the start, yeah. so it's pretty easy to identify the bad boys. <laughs> Russell, um, how would you get on today? Uh, we were a bit lucky in the end. We were second in the end because two other boats beat us but they were disqualified for being over the line at the start the dirty filthy cheats <laughs> it was a pretty frantic start wasn't it, it was everybody very, squeaked it was a very frantic start with a bit of tide underneath you and you had to be in one place and we all got there a bit early so we were over but we went back so we had to come from quite a long way back through the fleet it was a very punchy beat home especially when you've got an my expensive sales being <laughs> ruined on the first day it was a little bit sad but uh, and especially as that actually probably lost us the race as well. Anyway, it's good. It's good Just fun. keep thinking of the second. A, a second is a very, very, we were even happy with a fourth, but a second is an even better than that. So it's a first day. Still only got six seconds to go, five. It looks like 11.69 is going to be pushed over. Oh, pushed very well over, yeah. Set Jeepster totally is over. over. Individual recall. And that'll be uh, 1179, 11.79, sorry. So they're definitely going to be have to go back. Jeepster, yes, they're going back now. Not everybody managed to keep uh, the rig on top of the boat as they came down there. They had a few problems with jibes, but it was pretty entertaining and great to watch. And I caught up with one of the sailors there, a chap called Bruce Grant, who is a former International 14 sailor, no stranger to high-performance sailing. And he told me how the day had gone. We're on Endeavour 738, it's one of a squadron charter boats and uh, this is our second year of having a go. Give us a, just give us an overview of what today was like because it, it was more than one race for you for a start, wasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. What the uh, J70s have organised is a four uh, day series of three races each day and that is really, really good. Twelve race series and generally you get the pros or, or the people who are regulars doing really well and the charter fleet will also have a go at the pros. So it's just great racing. Three races today, a passage race over to the Hillhead Plateau, which was tough spinnaker reach. That was really good. And then the uh, second race was two sausages, and the third race essentially a passage race back. The Red Wings are intensely competitive. There's no question about that. Uh, and it was interesting to see them line up on a start line where there weren't the influences of the land and trying to start off the squadron with the tide and the rocks and the beach and the green and everything else. And you see them for what they are. And they are a very, very closely fought uh, fleet and very intense fleet and some great racing in there. But not everyone in the Red Wing fleet was having such a good day. The decision to move some of the white group classes to the Eastern Solon was a very good one. The Red Wings came out here, as indeed did several other classes. And what they were greeted by was a wide expanse of water, hardly anybody else here. So a superb race course, plenty of breeze, and a pretty flat sea state as well. It couldn't really get much better for the Red Wings. What a great class they are. Well, that's the story of the Red Wings, but now let's look at SP20s. They started down here on the Royal Yacht Squadron line. Lots of trimming, lots of hard work being done by the, uh, the main sheet people in the middle of the boat, easing the gear every time they get a gust. You really want to keep a consistent angle of heel, the boat leaning over. This is tight racing, isn't it? Really tight. Look at it. Look at the port and starboard changing tacks every time, and, and now as they go to the left of shot, the Maltese boat with the cross in the middle getting look, pushed off. Look at that gust on the water just at the top of the picture here. Big grey patch. They're quite nicely bow forward of the boats around them, but unless they can get some pace on, as, as 13, I believe, sheets on nicely. Oh, Individual recall. recall. Looks like 36, who's out left of picture there. They might have been over. I can't quite see. 37 is on their hip to weather, so not an ideal start for them. 37 debutant. They're third overall at the moment in this class, so if they have to go back, that's going to hurt their chances today. Who should we be looking for then, other than yours? Ah, well, uh, Doublet, which is uh, John Corby and Graham Wilkinson, they um, 
they've done very well. They beat us by a couple of points in Cows Classics week uh, a few weeks ago. And um, they uh, they won the first race, but they were second yesterday to Dauntless. So uh, they're in there. Debutante, um, uh, Richard, Richard Ottaway and Jane Sumption, they're, they're uh, right up there. We've got the speed, uh, we've got the capability. Streak's doing very well this year. So yeah, uh, quite a few um, vying for the, the points. Well, it's a great class, as I say, Daring. I've, I've enjoyed sailing her a few times and uh, the lovely sail, three people and uh, nice spinnaker as well. So, you know, you get Big the spinnaker. full sail. Yeah. In fact, yesterday we, uh, we have the option of a uh, smaller reaching spinnaker as well in the wardrobe. And uh, yesterday the smaller reaching spinnaker really helped a lot. That's what got Dauntless from third to first and uh, one of the race. Uh, so, yeah. We're, we're doing well. We're doing very well. Nice one. How long have you been sailing an XOD? Too long. <laughs> No, an XOD probably for about 15 years. Will be. Individual recall, there it is, theme for the day. Well, it's good that it's an individual rather than a general. But a nice start from the rest of the fleet. 50 here, bottom of shot. Nice yes. clean air, look at them punching out. Excitation. The Excitation doing a beautiful job there. I was really interested to see how much that would have played out later on. The fleet basically had, it was a relatively short race, but they went out to the west, they went um, down towards uh, Saltmead and around that sort of area, and then they came back along the island shore, but the tide was running so hard to the west that they had to really hug into the shoreline to actually get out of the tide, and it made for some spectacular images. You're on Bertie Bickett's Fargo today, which is a lovely boat, but I suspect you're not going to get quite the same G-forces around the corner. I don't know. I don't know. It depends how many times we broach out. There's a bit of breeze forecast, so it might happen. <laughs> yeah. So what, uh, what brings you up here for Cow's Week? Well, I mean, I live on the island, so I'm here with my family and obviously a huge fan of Cow's Week and having had the chance to compete many times over the years. So, yeah, I mean, Birdie asked me to come along and, you know, it's been great to build a relationship with him over, over the last few years with the Yacht Club, the Squadron and the America's Cup. But also we're here launching the Athena Pathway programme with Hannah Mills. And that's a really great new initiative that we put together to really push our teams forwards with the Youth and Women's America's Cup and also the Women's Initiative in Sail GP giving those young people the opportunity to come through, you know, really talented young sailors, how do they get into CLGP, how do they get into the America's Cup, providing that pathway. And of course, you know, women in sport is really prevalent at the moment with the Lionesses win on, on Sunday. And we've got, in Hannah, we've got the most successful ever female Olympic sailor. She's such a great ambassador for the sport. So we're really proud that she's leading this pathway program for us and we're just helping support that. Yeah, well, Athena Pathway Programme um, we're launching today, which is based around the Women's and Youth America's Cup that's been announced to take place in 2024. We've bought uh, an ETF-26 boat, which is out uh, on the Solent today, uh, sailing around, and we're, we're essentially trying to provide more opportunities for women and youth to get into to this type of sailing uh, in the elite end of the sport. And very important to see today, but uh, this is you know, a, a training into the America's Cup, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yes, yeah, so this is the start, uh, very, very beginning of the journey. And um, you know, for any females or youth sailors out there watching um, that might want to get a part, take a part in what we're trying to do, uh, the website goes live today, and there's going to be an application form. So anyone who's interested in getting involved, please let us know. Okay. Also, rating for Women's Day was a local all-female crew on Nightjar, a J92 racing in IRC4, and Penny Jeffcoat is her skipper. Uh, Women's Day was absolutely fantastic. We had an absolute ball. It was really brilliant racing and all of the girls on the crew, we had an excellent time together, really racing the boat hard and doing a really great job and uh, doing some really good work out on the water. For any of the crews that were looking forward to some downwind action, well, day five was their day because it started with a downwind start. In fact, for everybody, the leg went well into the eastern Solent. And for the asymmetric boats, they had a day where there were some very long downwind legs and some nice waves and some nice gusts to surf down. The only slight catch was that to have such nice extended downwind legs, you had to do a long upwind leg as well, at least one. It was a long day, Matt. It really was. But, you know, you can't. You can't get better than two completely, completely evenly matched boats. These two IC37s are a real joy to sail, and, and we've got some great competition with uh, with our friends on, on Aqua, and uh, we were just 
battling it out for whatever four hours it, exhausting yeah we had a good race although as you say it was a very long race particularly long beat it felt like we'd effectively done an offshore race by the time we got to the top mark. We saw as you came over the finishing line that, or as you approached the finishing line, Leon was pretty close on your tail. How did you, how did you get on? Yeah, we were always quite close with Leon the whole way around the track. We're very close boats and upwind they often have a little bit of an edge on us and uh, downwind we often have a bit of an edge on them. So we're particularly pleased today because it's a predominantly upwind race uh, that we were able to beat them. This is, as you say, where it gets quite difficult to figure out, certainly in the classes that are close, who's going to get the upper hand. And so you start trawling back for the worst result, which you can drop. But you can only do that if you've sold a minimum number, which is six races. So discard, it, it is discard day to day. And someone from this very club has actually discarded a first. Yeah, that makes the maths a bit easier, doesn't it? <laughs> I wonder which first I should discard. Um, should it be the Tuesday or the Wednesday? I don't know. Rupert Mandes, who you're referring to, of course, in the Flying 15s. Uh, I think we've won every race, yes. I'd uh, had some luck and uh, managed to uh, sneak ahead on uh, several of the days, yes. What's the secret to success? Ah, well, that, that, that was a question we've just been uh, working out how to answer. So uh, something to do with figuring out the tides, the wind, and uh, starting uh, well and then uh, seeing if we can stay ahead of the others. What is it that makes the Flying 15 so appealing? Uh, that's a great question. Um, I, I think there's, there's good close uh, racing, um, reasonably close uh, tight rules so that there's not much uh, development, still little bits of development but not much. So uh, our boat is now uh, not, nearly 20 years old and it's still uh, doing, uh, doing okay. <laughs> so um, you know, they, they last a lot longer um, and uh, so some of the, as you said, some of the newer fleets are coming and going quicker than that. So. Uh, we, we had a good day, and a very, very tricky day, but we had a good day. We um, were third in the early part, and then we, uh, second beat, we got good shift, got quite a good lead on, and then it was relatively easy from there. I'm not saying not stressful, but relatively easy. We, there was a few shifts after that, but nothing quite as big as they'd been early on. So to win is very, very pleasing, um, especially against the level of talent that there is. There's, there's a lot of people that have won a, a lot of trophies, but there are also people sailing with their daughters and, and we, I've got two of my daughters on, on board and one of their boyfriends, it's, it, it's, it's good. It's marginally too professionals for my enjoyment, but um, it, it, there is certainly a good standard of people in the yeah. fleet. So anybody who's been following the black group overall results will know that this boat, Ziggy, as you know, fun, is currently leading. Owned and skipper by Kevin Downer. Kevin, how did you get on today? I think we've done okay, but um, with the rating system, there's a few boats behind us. They should be in about seven or eight minutes behind us and we'll be okay. So, um, so yeah, fingers crossed. I think you've, been, you've been having a hell of a week. It's been great. The boat's been going great. In the in the breeze, it loves it, and in the light, it seems to be okay. <laughs> We're so used to Cow's Week being sort of the focus uh, is sort of carbon and expensive and the rest of it. And with all due respect, this is not at that end of the scale. Well, no, because if you look at our rig, um, I help out in an etch with the etchels for David Franks, and when they tear their sails and break their masts. Um, we use their recycled sails on our boat. Hence, the bottom batten is so low. It's an X, uh, it's an old etchel mast. It's an uh, etchel jib. It's an etchel mainsail. It's an etchel spinnaker. It's an etchel spinnaker pole. Uh, Joe Richards gave us a SB3, SB20 bulb to go on the bottom of the keel because we kept capsizing. So, um, but no, it's, um, it's, it's good. We love the IRC trickery and and that's fantastic and I mean just overall I mean what do you think the boat has cost to put together thousand pound no really yeah I don't think much more than that no no because the sales are the so yeah time but the sale the sales were for free um, the mast for free yeah it's not it's not much the boat cost about 500 pound in the first place that is fantastic. I have to say, that has probably made my, made my week hearing that. That's fantastic. We, we lined up 
we lined up, we did the IRC National, so we got the whole boat all measured up and, um, and endorsed so we could do the IRC Nationals. And we were the smallest one out there, but we were the only one with white sails. Everything else had carbon. It was like, hmm. <laughs> Well, fantastic good on you that's good, good recycling good just to keep going absolutely well it must be one of the greenest boats out here <laughs> maybe <laughs> certainly recycled i want to find peter morton and he's sailing a swan 36 called skirtso and the reason i want to find him and i think he's down here is because peter and his crew are currently lying uh second overall in black group by just a fraction of a point to Adam Gosling's yes. And what fascinates me is not only the battle that might be shaping up between those two boats, but they could not be two more different boats vying for the top spot in black group. I've got a couple of grandchildren, not that old, but anyway, no, three grandchildren, what are you talking about? Three grandchildren. And I just thought it'd be quite nice if we got something that the, you know, the kids could sell, my daughters and their son-in-laws and so on. So we looked at the Contest 32 and then thought, mm, a bit small. And found one of these. Oh, lovely! And, and then, um, <laughs> then the trouble started. Uh, it came down from Scotland on a truck. Uh, went to Hamble for a while to dry out. Came over here. Went to David Heritage for almost a year and a half. Um, and he's produced what's here now. Yeah. Right now we've come over the other side. We've found Adam Gosling. Obviously, you're known because we've spoken to him a few times already this week. Now I've had. We've all had a look. Black Group. You're less than half a point ahead of. Um, that Swan 36 over there. Okay, yeah, great. Yeah, well, you're pretending you haven't looked, you've looked. Yeah, no, I've looked at the results and I can see we're a little bit ahead, um, but it's all down to today's race and we'll go out there and do the best we can and um, see where it leads us. I mean, that's the strange thing about the overall points, isn't it? You can't really influence anything on those because you're in different classes. No, you've got no control and of course it depends on the competition in the other classes. Um, you know, one year we've done it where we've had a very soft class, this year we've got a very competitive class, so it just makes you sail a bit better. So, Richie Faulkner's XOD 166 Swallow, which is steered by Ben McGrain and crewed by Russ Clark, put in a second today to deliver another impressive result. They'd won the race the previous day and worked their way up the points table to go into the final race, just two points off the overall lead. They needed to beat Claire de Lune, XOD uh, 33, Max Crow's boat. They were just two points in front. And as uh, Richie Faulkner's boat crossed the line, Claire de Lune was yeah, nowhere to be I'm seen. Fine. Well, Ben and crew, well done. I mean, that was, uh, you look quite relieved, actually. You normally take these things in your stride, Ben, but you look uh, a bit stressed. It was a pretty tricky race, to be fair. Um, we had a long, what should have been a run back across with the tide sweeping everybody and, uh, and, it, and the wind was dying and John was coming down behind us and uh, yeah we were just trying to stay calm and get through it all but yeah cow's week it's a it's a different kind of regatta but yeah a lot of emotions really it's, it was tricky also with the breeze wasn't it because it was coming in pulses as the breeze came off the shore interfering with the gradient breeze yeah yeah it was yeah I mean, it's just another hard day really um you guys did a fantastic job Russ was absolutely on it with the nav and, and me and Jamie just keeping the boat going really all week. It's been great. He steers quite well, doesn't he? He does, does a very, very good job. So, I mean, for me, it was a real team effort with these boys. I mean, Russ's navigation was on there and it had to be this week. It was difficult, really difficult. But then Ben, he does it do, does it do very well, does it very well. So, yeah. And you work your way up through the fleet during the week, didn't you? I mean, it wasn't straightforward at all. You've had to grind this out right to the end. Yeah, we haven't sailed with each other before. So, you know, Saturday was day one as a crew. And uh, we just worked on it, done all the basics right, keep the good chat going. Um, and, you know, the boat, as you know, has a lot of history. And it's something we wanted to do. And we've done it. And it's pretty emotional, pretty special. And, and a really, you know, great day. Well, what a superb win you just see there the boat that had it in within their grasp Claire de Lune but just couldn't string it together today and they talk of it being an emotional win and it is because the person who used to own this boat was Simon Russell or better known as Fumesy who sadly passed away and the co-owner Richard Faulkner always wanted this boat to go and do Cow's Week again and in fact Fumesy had won Cow's Week in this boat in 2019 so, uh, yeah, they're all uh, 
uh, understandably chuffed at having been able to d deliver another win in what many consider to be the, the hardest fought class at Cows Week. So that was Cows Week 2022 and lots of highlights uh, as you've just seen. But Matt and I, well, there are too many to actually talk about, Matt. Uh, rocks off of the squadron here, which various boats caught. I think the worst one of that was Danny, wasn't it? Mm, yeah, I mean, what a tragedy for them. I mean, they were right in the money for winning white group overall and then to just see it not just slip out through their fingers but just disappear altogether after they hit the rocks tragic for them real tragic uh, the appearance and multiplication of the cake 31s that has been absolutely fascinating i mean i know we've been going on about it all week but it is for me one of the classes to watch you know seven boats last year 18 or 19 entered this year that is a class that i think is on the rise here in the solent and possibly even internationally as well so that was very exciting and i did enjoy my trip down to Bembridge and uh, seeing the red wings in their home environment and i think you were bowled over by a certain ziggy well i was i mean i just thought it was it was such a fascinating story it's a great story a boat that was under a thousand pounds cobbled together from bits and pieces and yet it was winning its class and not just winning its class it very nearly won black group overall and I just think that says so many good things about how it's not necessarily about carbon fiber and unobtainable uh, materials and high budgets it actually it is affordable absolutely so much for checkbook racing though Indeed. I think the other thing that struck me about uh, setting aside the classes was that, I mean, I've been doing, like you, I've been at this event for many, many years. I started sailing here as a teenager, and we've seen lots of changes over the years. But I think, if I'm honest, the thing that concerned me a little bit as we came into this was that there's been there's so much going on in the world, so much else going on in the world. People have been cooped up for two years, and there is certainly a sense that people are off on holiday and say, no, I'm going to have to miss it this time. And I worried about whether it would really have the buzz that has been so charis um, characteristic of Cowsway. And I think it has. I think, for me, it's been superb. It's been a real vibrant, exciting event to be at. And uh, I'm so pleased to see that. A great event then, and uh, we all thoroughly enjoyed it. I hope you did too. Uh, so Steve Angsel and Matt Sheehan are signing off for a year. We'll be back, hopefully. 29th of July 2023. Who should we be looking for then other than yours? The guys at the front of the fleet. I don't want to say who they are because they know who they are. They are brilliant. Boats very early on the on the line, 1572, that's Brutus. Looking very He's early, holding back. That's it, and we can see them all look diving down here, desperately trying to stay the right side of the line before the star gun goes. <laughs> There's a very brave port tacker here, 86. Ah, that's Fargo. Line clear, line clear. Well, how Amazing. well done. A round of applause here up on the uh, squadron platform for the X1 design. <laughs> a lot of port and starboard going on here. Big duck for 1573, they've got to keep clear. 20, 25 knots, possibly even gusts at Nervous on the shore than I would be on the boat, it's just watching them go around. Is there anything that you can look to that you feel that you're doing right? Beating the better sailors, yes. <laughs> and how? I love <laughs> Trying not to make mistakes, and luckily the other boats in the fleet did make mistakes, so never give up. Your opportunity might come. Thank you. No.
It was a proper Cow's Week day, I'd say. That's it for today at Cow's. Oh, we did mention rocks, didn't we? Yeah, it was a proper Cow's Week dust up today with tankers. Some of the fleet ahead of us went the wrong way around it. We pointed out the error of their ways. As a result of people and back, come back in one piece, it's good. This is tight racing, isn't it? Really tight, look at it. In anything at Cowes, it's getting a right team. We've all got to be good and gel together. Try and get them to bed early at night. <laughs> I've been researching in some of my favourite locations for research, and it is only research. It might be called the beer tent to other people, but it's where I go to work. Cows, we can go everywhere just beginning to get the hang of things, you know. <laughs> Nothing like a good cow's week boat on boat.